In today's video, I am going to be simplifying everything you need to know when it comes to buying a computer monitor for color grading and video editing in 2022, 2023, and beyond. So without further ado, let's get into it. What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to the channel, I am Sydney Baker Green. I'm a cinematographer and colorist, and the reason I wanted to create this video is because I see a lot of videos talking about the best monitor in 2022, 2023, but not really talking about what ingredients make a monitor good for color grading and video editing. Now, just in case you are actually looking for recommendations, I have a couple monitors in the description down below, as well as a link to the LG C1 OLED TV that I use as my mastering display. But let's go ahead and talk about these important ingredients. The first important ingredient is going to be color space, also known as color gamut. There's going to be three color gamuts that you're primarily going to need to concern yourself with. sRGB, DCI P3 and Rec 2020. Now you may notice I didn't say Rec 709 despite the fact that we use Rec 709 for standard dynamic range. That is because sRGB and Rec 709 are actually the same color space. They just have different gammas or brightness levels, but they share the same color primaries. What we're looking for is going to be the highest percentage in each of these categories. That's a perfect world. Now, if you are a beginner, then all you need is 100% of sRGB coverage and a good colorometer because that's going to allow you to calibrate into Rec. 709 at the correct gamma. However, if you're looking to get into HDR work, you're going to need at least 97 to 99% of DCI-P3 covered, and then also the highest possible Rec. 2020 coverage. One of the things that you're going to have a hard time finding is 100% Rec. 2020 coverage. However, Rec. 2020 isn't really widely adopted. Despite it being the only HDR format supported on YouTube, it hasn't been highly adopted yet. So for that HDR content, you are going to be good with DCI-P3, especially if you're making movies. The next important ingredients, and we're gonna lump in a couple of them, are going to be our brightness, our panel type, and our contrast ratio. So let's start with brightness. So if you're a beginner and we're working in Rec. 709, you really don't have to worry about brightness as much, as I find most monitors on the market are over bright for Rec. 709 and you have to dial them back. But when we're working in HDR, a thousand nits is the bare minimum when it comes to creating HDR work. And this needs to be sustained peak brightness. This is going to be represented again in nits. So at a minimum for HDR content, 1000 nits. If you're doing SDR content, you're gonna have to calibrate to 100 nits for Rec. 709. But with that being said, we have different panel technologies and these technologies have their strengths and their limitations. The the first panel technology, which you might be familiar with, is called an IPS display or in panel switching. The pros of these displays are that they get much brighter than their counterpart, OLED displays. However, OLED displays have a better contrast ratio. Now, a contrast ratio is essentially the amount of steps between your black point and your white point. This is generally represented in a number something like 1,300 to 1. The greater the difference, the higher the contrast ratio. Personally, I feel that OLED displays are better for HDR work because they don't suffer from the lack of the contrast ratio that an IPS display will have. That being said, as long as you have your 1000 nits for HDR work, I'm gonna have to say that it's honestly a personal preference. I'm in the OLED camp, but IPS displays are much cheaper. If you're in Winx 709 and you're on an IPS display, you're going to be fine, but you want that 1,000 nits if you are working in HDR. So we've talked about color space and brightness, but all those things won't matter if we don't have good color accuracy. This is where you'll see something called Delta E. Delta E is basically the deviation from where a color is supposed to be and how that display actually represents it. The smaller the number, the better as a general rule of thumb. I go for monitors out of the box with Delta E less than one. And my LG C1 OLED back there is actually calibrated to Delta E 0.3 after a quite extensive calibration process, I should say. So that is basically the general rule of thumb when it comes to color deviation. Essentially 
essentially, that's all that goes into picking a good monitor, but I wanna give you a bonus tip to take your color grading and video editing to the next level. Invest in more than one monitor. You want a monitor for your graphic user interface, and then you want a monitor that is getting a clean output of Rec. 709 or HDR without your computer's color management interfering. This is where something called a DeckLink card comes in, as I am a DaVinci Resolve user. This goes into my PCIe Express card slot in my computer, and from there, it gives me a clean feed to my calibrated LG C1 OLED so that I am interpreting the color space that I'm supposed to be in properly. So if you wanna up your game, get multiple monitors. Your color accurate display would be the one that you would be using as your mastering display, and you can use whatever display in the world you want to really, for your actual graphic user interface display. There are so many things that go into buying a monitor, but I wanted to talk about the most important things. However, feel free to let me know some of the things that you really look for when it comes to buying a monitor in the description down below. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. My beautiful people, now, more than ever, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. I'm Sydney. I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.